Hello, welcome to Introduction to Ethics, Philosophy 1300. My name is Grant Yoakum. I will be uh, your instructor for the course. Um, I'm hoping to be able to get through this video fairly quickly, but I've got a tendency to run on. So, um, anyhow, please bear with me if this is a little bit on the long side. Uh, the purpose of this video is to uh, go over the course syllabus, and I've got the list of general categories that I'm going to discuss briefly today. Um, so, uh, more or less, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, introduce you to the course, and um, you see have posted to Moodle some uh, additional sort of very introductory uh, sort of material. Um, and uh, the course begins in earnest um, next week. All right, so I've got uh, material set to appear to you on uh, January 7th. So, um, Happy New Year. Uh, so, um, the first thing you find on the syllabus and on the, um, the, the course Moodle page is uh, my name, my email address, um, my on-campus office hours, which are from 4.30 to 5.45 um, on Wednesdays, uh, plus by appointment. Um, uh, this course meets virtually, so it, we're in an online sort of environment here. Uh, so it's important that you contact me with any sort of problems or difficulties that you're having with the course. Um, from questions about assignments to um, questions about the material, the readings, some of the supplementary video material that I post, um, etc., etc. Um, my office is in the Math and Science Center, and I'm in room 642, um, which is sort of shared accommodation. So, um, you know, bear, bear, bear with the fact that there will likely be other students and uh, instructors in that room. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, should be able to address any sort of questions that you may have um, at that time or by appointment. Now, um, the other thing to understand about uh, me and my doing this is that uh, I'm actually sitting in an office in Canada right now. Um, I'm a commuter, I live in Windsor, and uh, the, the Department of Philosophy has been good with setting up these online courses so that I can telecommute rather than um, do the long sort of international Department of Homeland Security commute. So, um, and it, in some cases, I, I, I also have twin girls that are two years old, so um, childcare requirements and that sort of thing. In some cases, I won't be able to make it over for an in-person meeting. Um, if that happens, I would be more than happy to meet with you uh, via Skype. So, um, that... I should be able to address any sort of issues with the course in that way, and if you absolutely need a meeting, of course, this is my job and I would come in. So, um, I hope to have a really interesting semester with you. Um, uh, the first uh, big chunk of text that you find on the course syllabus is the course catalog description. Uh, basically, they introduce sort of a thematic um, major ethical analysis of right and wrong, good and evil from the ancient Greeks to the present, appeals to custom, theology, happiness, reason, human nature will be examined offering uh, variable criteria for judgments on contemporary issues of moral concern offered every semester, and this is of course a gen ed requirement in, what, in the Western Civilization Knowledge Exploration area, which um, it, you probably all know that's probably why you're in this class. Now, um, it, it basically, this course description and the course objectives for general education um, it, it are the box that I need to fit in when I design this course. So uh, there are a couple of important, um, of, of course, it, it's important to introduce the important historical texts. So. I've picked a smattering of them spanning well over 2,000 years. Um, it's an annoying pile of text, but I've tried to pick ones that are as cheap as possible for you. Um, the only textbook that you may have trouble getting uh, is this last one, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, Existentialism and Human Emotions. Um, unfortunately, I've, I've discovered that it's out of print, but I've been using it for a long time. There are a number of used copies, and um, the, the bookstore offers a, 
uh, orders a limited amount of reprints of this text, so don't freak out if your cover is different. Um, but uh, please do let me know if you have trouble by the time we get to the end of the course. It's in April by the time uh, we're turning to that material. Um, well, March 25th to April 17th. Uh, so um, if you have trouble getting that text, let me know, and um, I think I can produce an electronic version of uh, the text for you if need be. Um, but nonetheless, um, do endeavor to get the actual copies of these texts um, that I've ordered from you, uh, for you. Um, partially I buy them because, or I order them because they're cheap. Partially I do so because the explanatory notes are excellent. Um, and uh, it, 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 quite frequently throughout the course, I'll be tossing out page references, and you're probably going to be lost if you don't have the texts that um, I've specifically ordered for you. Um, so, uh, back to the learning outcomes here. So, um, I'm introducing you to the text, so students' texts, text students will do more on that throughout the semester. Um, I'm supposed to show students how theories about ethics have developed over time, so I've picked ancient, modern, and postmodern sort of texts so that we can see at least three major epochs of ethical theory and the tendencies associated with those. Um, uh, so it's got cross-cutting capacities of effective communication, critical theory, uh, critical theory, my training is showing here, um, critical thinking um, uh, with um, it, the further uh, sort of outcomes where uh, I'm supposed to help you develop your facility in reading and analyzing theories learned in class. How do I know you've analyzed? You've got to write about them. So um, I, it, it leads um, to, to the next one, facility and writing creatively and clearly about ethical questions and to help students learn how to apply ethical theory to concrete situations. So um, the trick is you're going to have to write in this course and um, I've spent a lot of time sort of, you know, trying to, 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 to sort of balance uh, the idea that this has to be a writing intensive course with the reality that um, you need feedback quickly. Uh, given that it's a writing intensive course, it takes a long time to read everything you've written and to offer sufficient feedback to be of some use to you. So um, in the past, I've had some trouble uh, getting assignments turned around and back to students in a reasonable amount of time. Um, I've adjusted the course slightly this semester, so um, it, you should be getting regular and speedy feedback on at least most of the material. Um, I've written specific uh, learning outcomes um, uh, for this course uh, as well. I'll just read this section as stipulated above. This will be a writing intensive course that will ask you to critically and ref reflectively engage with some of the important texts from the history of ethical theory, those ones I was just holding up. Um, we'll proceed chronologically through these arguments, which, while important to understand in their own right, serve as examples of philosophical arguments that students will engage in order to develop and refine skills in reading, analyzing, and critically evaluating arguments more generally. So, assignments and forums in this course require substantial writing and ask uh, students to critique and evaluate concepts, distinctions, and arguments at the end of the course in addition to gaining an understanding of how ethical theory is developed through history, students will be able to evaluate the basic structure of an argument, uh, have premises support conclusions, that is, reasons offer support for beliefs, uh, more or less. Uh, we'll get on that fairly early in the course, of course, with Socrates. Um, uh, critically assess philosophical arguments be because it's, I, I don't want you to just be persuaded by these arguments. I want you, each and every one of these guys are trying to tell you what to do. So, uh, your natural disposition should be one by which you say, why are you claiming that? Why would you argue? Why do you want to, on what basis are you claiming that I should do this? Right. So, to a certain extent, you should take this personally. 
um, uh, do, 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 and clearly and effectively communicate uh, about and critique these ideas and arguments in writing. Constra that is constructing your own argument. So I built some of that into the course as well. Um, I've written a um, do, 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 do course description uh, which emphasizes the notion that ethics as a field makes no sense whatsoever without some understanding of human beings as free as able to act one way rather than another way. Right? The only way in which we can be held responsible for our actions or expected to act in one way rather than another is if we can, in, a, in some sense, choose right, to act this way rather than the other. Right? So uh, really, at the end of the day, this is a course about freedom. Uh, and what that means. Now, each of these, th these theorists um, that we will be studying will present us with some sort of rooted argument in the underlying nature of freedom. Right? So we'll be engaging that throughout the semester. Right? So anyhow, um, hopefully that will be um, an interesting uh, discussion that goes for the four months of the duration of this course. So um, that was the course description and uh, the outcome. So in theory, analyzing, writing, etc. Right. Um, we are going to move on to textbooks. And like I say, I've ordered these. I may have ordered them late, but nonetheless, you should be able to find them. Um, a, a whole series of big, ugly pile of textbooks. Um, it, there's seven for this course. Um, I do it this way. Because, uh, uh, here, here, where is an example? Um, I could order like a big hunk of doing ethics anthology textbook, but there are a number of problems with that. One, these are more expensive than what I've done. Two, um, what you get is somebody else's take on this material and not necessarily primary texts. Three, these books are generally designed for a full year course, and we've got four months, right? And four, um, this is the fourth edition of, of, of Lewis Vaughn's Doing Ethics, Moral Reasoning, Contemporary Issues. You know, um, textbooks can be a racket, right? So I tend to avoid that. If I want to know what Socrates argues, I'm going to go to the primary text. Right, that, that so that way we have something to talk about, not an interpretation of an interpretation of an interpretation. Uh, these are translations, so they are interpretations. Right? But nonetheless, they are at least translations of a primary text. Right, so um, if I'm going to treat teach you about Socrates, Aristotle, Kant, Mill, uh, Nietzsche, Sartre, then we should read some of the primary texts. And like I say, it's cheaper. It's not so long ago that I was a student. I, I remember how tight things can get. So, um, like I say, there are seven textbooks, um, and I'm not trying to be mean. Um, and it, like on top of that, you're you're probably freaking out about reading. Uh, we're reading portions of each of these textbooks. So uh, we will start with Plato's Five Dialogues, which I call Socrates, because you'll find Socrates as a character going through here. And um, the historical Socrates position seems to be distinct from Plato, who wrote down everything Socrates said. Anyhow, um, text is called Five Dialogues. We're looking at two, the Apology and the Crito. So um, that will be the first book we'll engage. Uh, the second um, is the Nicomachean Ethics, which, yeah, it's a more substantial text. It's comprised of 10 books. We'll be looking at um, two of those books in total and um, in the section one of a third. So I think it's something like 33 pages that I'm having you read of that. You see, what we're doing here is um, in uh, philosophy, uh, I will always sacrifice depth for breadth of reading, right? So if you really understand a portion of these texts that are central to the argument and it, you know, show the mechanism of the kind of argument that these theorists are making, it, 
it matters a lot less to me that you read a lot, but more that you understand a lot of what little you've read. And so, and it, it, the, the whole book's here if you want to read more, and I'd be more than happy to discuss further. Um, then we turn to Immanuel Kant's Grounding to the Metaphysic of Morals, which is a very classic introductory text. Um, how much are we reading of this? Not like a ton. I think it's under 50 pages. Uh, boo, 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 can't, can't, uh, uh, preface sections one and two. Um, so section two ends where, um, second section, yeah, we're in the 40s here. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's under 50 pages. It's 48 pages of um, this text, which is a skinny little text, but a dense argument. So we'll get, we're going to spend some time with it. Then I had to buy two books from John Stuart Mill. Um, it's the first three sections of utilitarianism that we're taking a look at, um, which is uh, basically a defense of a moral position. Right, um, and uh, then the first section of Mills on Liberty. I, I think both of these books total to under fifteen dollars. Right, you can get used copies on top of that. Um, it, we would have to read five or six sections of utilitarianism to get the same thing we get from reading three sections of this and um, the first section of that, right? So we're just trying to be efficient with our reading here. Um, it basically, this is the moral position, this is what happens in politics as a result of the moral position, or what Mill argues should happen in politics as a result of the moral position. So that is uh, Kant and Miller, the moderns, Aristotle and Socrates are the ancients, and then we move to our last two theorists, uh, one Mr. Frederick Nietzsche and his critical approach to um, the history of moral philosophy um, uh, that we will get uh, from his Beyond Good and Evil, and we're reading the preface, sections one and two of this, what I think is a very interesting book. Um, so the that's something we'll turn to towards the end of the course. And then finally, um, the existentialist and um, the fellow who turned down a Nobel Prize in literature for his nausea, um, Jean-Paul Sartre with his existentialism and human emotion, who basically creates a tension between the notions of freedom and responsibility, grounded in an interesting sort of philosophical way. So, um, that is basically spot checking 2400 years of ethical theory. So, um, it, of course, it's going to be incomplete because this is an introduction to ethics, but nonetheless, we handle many of the major movements right, in ethical theory by taking a look at those texts. And like I say, try and get those books. Get those ones, don't get other ones. Um, I had trouble with a student who um, did very poorly on his first test last semester as a result of having gone on Abe books and um, ordered the wrong books. And so he didn't know what to read. He was reading the wrong things and his res responses were way, way off, right? Um, so what did I say I would do? Um, next grade breakdown and um, assignments so basically this course is um, assessed in terms of three major categories right there are going to be tests there are going to be quizzes and there are going to be discussion forums right uh, the section tests three of them in total are worth 20 percent of your final grade each for a total of 60 percent um, each of them will consist of uh, four short answer questions um, in which you're going to have to write. Uh, I require a minimum of two paragraphs response to each of these questions, and that is a bare minimum, right? Uh, so basically, I'm going to, and these are multiple part questions, I will ask you to maybe define a term, make a distinction, and give an overview of the way that these concepts fit into the larger schema. Um, I will ask you to critically assess something. I will present you with an interpretation of this material and ask you to take a side and argue it. 
Um, so these, these are going to be the most substantial uh, amount of work that you'll be doing in this course. Um, so, uh, and I've pared these down. I was asking six questions and um, these used to be worth 90% of the course. I pared it down to 60 and each of these tests consists of four questions. Um, each of these tests will be accompanied by a short video in which I go over the questions and what's expected, um, that sort of thing. Make use of those videos. I find that people that don't make use of those videos do more poorly on those assignments. And if you'd like to come in and discuss um, uh, these section tests, I will um, I, I will uh, be available for that. I'd be more than happy to go over the questions with you in advance of your submission. Now, uh, how this is going to work, um, I'm going to post the questions and a video that goes over the questions to Moodle one week before the due date. You will have your textbooks. You will have your internet resources. You will have I haven't gotten to it yet, but the discussion forms for this class, collaborate, geez, do it, right? Um, and you will have me as a resource as well um, to uh, craft carefully your responses to, that que uh, to these questions. I give you a week because I expect you to be using that week, right? Saving yourself room to uh, proofread. Right. So you could do one question a day, concentrate heavily on it, and then proofread, uh, critically evaluate your own responses, and then submit. Right. So um, that's what we will be doing for those. Um, essentially, uh, how this works is we study two philosophers. The first section quiz has to do with Socrates, the two books from the five dialogues and uh, Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, and then we have a test. Right. Then we move to Immanuel Kant and the two books by John Stuart Mill, and then we have a test. Right. And then we move to Nietzsche and uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, and then it's your final section test. And right. so that's more or less how uh, that is going to go. Um, in addition to these section tests, um, each of the theorists uh, that we're going to study is going to be, and this is the new thing that I'm doing, accompanied by a Moodle quiz um, uh, that you will have until the end of the section in question to do. So, for example, um, the Socrates material opens up on January 7th, and you will have until January 19th um, to complete a very short timed reading and viewing quiz. This is, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure you're paying attention. So um, effectively, uh, these quizzes, one, they're timed, you'll have 15 minutes to do it, but they consist of five multiple choice questions, right? which will be really, really, really obvious, right? Um, it provided you've done the one, the readings, two, um, uh, viewed the, the required video material uh, for that section, right? So um, this is my way of keeping you on top of the material. Um, each of these tests is worth 5% of your final grade, five points for a total of 30 points. Um, it, so there are six of them kind of thing. So we'll do Socrates, then there's a the Socrates quiz. We'll do Aristotle, and then um, do uh, February 2nd, there is an Aristotle quiz. Um, your test uh, will be posted on uh, the 29th of January, and uh, you will have until the 5th of February uh, to engage with that material. Um, between you and me, I've already set all of this up, so it just kind of appears to you. So um, uh, that should be really, really, really straightforward. Um, uh, I felt a little bit guilty actually designing the questions on this, these quizzes because uh, yeah, from, from my perspective, they're a little bit too easy. But nonetheless, there should be at least some easy things in a course like that, right? So it's it, they're easy provided you've been keeping up with your work, so keep up with your work. And then, uh, finally, uh, your 
10% of your final grade, so don't sneeze at it because 10% uh, of your final grade is the difference between an A and a B, a B and a C, etc., etc. It's a full letter grade, right, that we're dealing with in terms of this 10%. Um, each of the theorists that we'll study will have a discussion forum um, associated with it. Um, I will present some sort of an idea or a problematic and uh, you on the basis of your reading your understanding of the material will enter into a dialogue um, with your fellow students on uh, these forums. Now um, you're expected to uh, engage with these forums fairly regularly. Um, keep on top of them that sort of thing but um, I will say I do leave these forums open for the entire semester. Right. None of them close until the very last minute for this course, which is April 20th at 11.55 p.m. That's five minutes to midnight. So, um, I, I, in a sense, I give you control over that 10% of your grade until uh, the very last possible section, uh, second of this course. Um, essentially, I ask myself three questions when um, I sign grades for these forums. Have you posted at least once uh, for, and I, I underline at least once uh, for each topic? More is better, and the idea here is to foster an ongoing conversation with you and your colleagues in the class. Right? Two, are the posts substantial? Right? Um, frequently, I have students give me one sentence responses. I like how you described Aristotle's idea, period but that doesn't show any sort of analysis or anything along those lines. And then finally, um, are the posts timely? All right. And last semester I can tell you I had a number of students that were uh, on the last day of the class doing all of the forum assignments. And I will tell you, I notice, all right, and that's reflected in your grade. Well, I leave them open until the end because whatever you post right up until the last minute can help you. It helps you less than if you had just done it all the way along, right? Um, now, just so you've got some feedback for these forums, I generally, um, I generally uh, don't calculate the forum grades until the end of the semester, but I've set up in Moodle this semester to um, give you some uh, forum feedback. So I'm going to go through each of your activities on the forums and give you some feedback for that at the midpoint of the semester. I'm going to be spending reading week doing that um, so that uh, you know how you're doing. Um, this, this, this also it gives me the chance to give you sort of a swift kick in the butt if you've been waiting till the end to do all of the forums. And right? so, um, more or less, uh, that is uh, what's going on with the forums. Now, um, these these are instructional resources, so it's not it's not like Facebook Messenger. It's not like you're writing posts on a blog wall or anything along those lines. Um, so basically. It, keep it um, keep it topical. Right? So you're not supposed to be talking about your weekend or the concert you were at, unless unless it's an example that has some bearing on what you're talking about with regard to the topic of the forum. And um, the other thing to keep in mind, and um, I've got this front and center on each of the forums. I've got a content policy. Um, it, it, the idea is that if, if you engage in personal attacks or any sort of uh, derogatory sort of comments about other students engaging with the forums, I will remove the post and institute some sort of policy or uh, some sort of penalty. Um, it, it, keep in mind you've got a student code of conduct that you're engaging with as well um, and in severe cases where you know the, the personal attacks become vicious or something along those lines it may have to go to the Dean of Students office so that's me finger wagging. I've only had one problem ever with these forms of that sort so um, the idea is keep it topical, keep it classy. Right? So um, <clears throat> that is how your grades are broken down. So three section tests were 20 each, totaling the 60. Um, six quizzes worth 5% each, totaling the 30, and discussion forums um, totaling the 10. Um, one more thing about the uh, midterm sort of review of your discussion forums. 
uh, that is a provisional grade that I give you. Right? I give you a grade out of 10 at the midterm, but that doesn't, it's, you'll see it's weighted at zero in grade book. Right? So I will adjust that grade in its totality towards the end of the semester, and you only get a final grade at the end of the semester. So uh, that should uh, be clear, I hope. Um, let me see, what did I say I'd do next? Grade breakdown and assignments, policies. Ooh, the section I hate. Um, my policy section on page two of the syllabus is growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. And, and um, I've got to say, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with it, it, problems I've had in the past. Right? So if I have a problem in the past, I institute a policy so that the problem isn't a problem in the future, or at least if there is a problem in the future, I can point to a policy and the problem is um, clear and easy to handle. Um, first pol uh, general policy regards is regarding plagiarism. Um, and you'll notice I've got a footnote to oakland.edu um, policies and procedures. This is, this is in the student code of conduct, right, regarding academic integrity, um, and I'll just read uh, Oakland University's uh, position on plagiarizing, plagiarizing the work of others. Plagiarism is using someone else's work or idea, ideas without giving that person credit. By doing this, a student is, in effect, claiming credit for someone else's thinking. Whether the student has read or heard the information used, the student must document the source of the information. When dealing with written sources, a clear distinction should be made between quotations, which re reproduce the information um, from the source word for word within quotation marks, and paraphrases, which digest the source of information and produce it in the student's own words. Both the person's, uh, both direct quotations and paraphrases must be documented. Even if the student rephrases, condenses, or selects from another person's work, the ideas are still the other person's, and failure to give credit constitutes misrepresentation of the student's actual work and plagiarism of another's ideas. Buying a paper or using information from the World Wide Web or Internet, I love the redundancy there, um, without attribution and handing it in as one's own work is plagiarism. So my policy is zero tolerance on this. Um, it, basically, this is what my contract says. I am an adequate judge of the quality of your work, but when it comes to questions of authorship, I'm not allowed to determine that. Right? If there's a question of authorship, I'm obligated contractually to pass it on to the uh, Dean of Students Office, and then the Dean of Students Office goes through it with a fine-tooth comb and determines whether or not it's a case of plagiarism. If it is, you're hauled in for some sort of um, tribunal, right, basically. Um, sanctions can be quite severe, um, and expulsion from the university is po possible. And my policy in the course is that you don't fail the assignment, you fail the course if you plagiarize. Now, um, technology is getting funny, um, and I'm finding that students are finding new and interesting ways to plagiarize. There are new services online that hide documents behind paywalls and stuff like that. There are a few of them that I found last semester, and please note that I'm a subscriber to many of these as well, so if you think you're safe because you're behind a paywall, you're not safe because I've paid and can get beyond the wall. Right. So, um, aside from that, I've got like some sort of spider sense for plagiarism. There's a very specific way that academics write that students don't, um, and frankly, shouldn't try to. Right. So, um, it, you're always best to use the reflections and your own understanding. That way you're, you're actually engaging with the course and developing the understanding that you've paid to develop. So, plagiarism, don't do it finger wag, finger wag. Now, you see, this is, this is why I don't like the, in the context of an ethics course, I feel like I should bring this up. These policies, given that I've had 
problems in the past are necessary, but they put me in a position where I'm accusing you, who I don't even know, you haven't done anything. You're probably very nice people. Um, I'm, it, it, it puts me in sort of a police officer kind of position where I'm incriminating you, even though you haven't done anything. Uh, this policy means absolutely nothing to you, provided you don't do anything listed in this policy, which is all, already, all right, as you know, evidenced by the fact that there is an Oakland University policy on this, it's your responsibility not to do. Right? So basically I'm in the position of saying don't break the law because this is theft and there are intellectual property laws that govern this. Um, if, if you're completely freaked out now, um, if, if, if you say, oh geez, I don't know what plagiarism is or how to avoid it, there is an excellent online program um, through the Academic Writing Center and I give you a link to it on the course syllabus, it's called SiteWrite. Right. So um, that is a resource for you. It's quite good. I've gone through right? and uh, I learned things. So uh, you, should, you should just do that anyway at the beginning of the course. Go through the site rate program. It doesn't take that long and it's beneficial. Um, so don't plagiarize. So, uh, missed assignment policy. Um, I've got my legalistic kind of uh, description of this. Here, I'll just talk it, right? You can read what I've got there. The missed assignment policy is this. One, I understand that life happens. I, I've got twin daughters. They're sick all the time because they're in daycare. Uh, my mother it has poor health, that sort of thing. I'm commuting from Canada. Sometimes I hit a border and I'm told by the Department of Homeland Security to sit down and think about what I've done, even though I haven't done anything. So I, I understand life happens. Right. Now, if it turns out that you are uh, missing an assignment deadline or due date due to life happening, contact me. Contact me. That's all you've got to do. Either before the assignment deadline or due date in question or within 12 hours of that. And, you know, I'll work with you. I'm, you'll find me very accommodating in this. But this policy is a policy here because I've had people come to, like just last semester I had somebody saying I missed the first test which was October and it's December 16th by the time I'm hearing from this student saying hey can I make up this student? no it's long gone I, I post assessment keys this is no you uh, 12 hours send me an email I will produce more time I understand that life happens and I'm willing to work with you to get you through this course. Right? You just have to work with me. The idea is that an extension requires a conversation. I'm more than happy to have the conversation with you. I'm actually quite a nice guy. Um, on to assignment submission. Quite frequently I have people give me their homework for other classes as submissions to this class. It happens frequently. I, so I've got a policy. It's, it's, it's your responsibility to make sure that I've got the right document. Get it to me and I will grade it. Right? I, 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 I can't go into your hard drive and grab what I need. Right? So you, you, you have to get it to me. So it's your responsibility to make sure that one, you've properly uploaded an assignment and two, that the assignment you've properly uploaded is the correct assignment for credit. Because, I mean, your, 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 your reflection paper on Faulkner, well, interesting, and a, a, I might be interested to read it, right? just is not a response to a Socrates and Aristotle exam. Right? So, um, it, it just make sure you've got the right document, make sure it's uploaded properly. If you're freaked out about Moodle and whether or not you've up, email your responses to me, be redundant. You're best to be redundant, right? Um, speaking of email, um, I try to keep up with email, but um, you see this is an online class, so I've got a bunch of students. The only way they contact me is email, so I try to stay on top of it, as on top of it as possible, but I do fall behind. Right. So, um, you want the best way to get in touch with me is in person. Come to my office hours. That's the best way to get in touch with me. 
Um, email works. Um, it, sometimes though, if I have 10 questions that are the same, I send out a general email to everyone. Right? Um, I'm not ignoring you, I'm just trying to be efficient. Um, and uh, my policy um, uh, for this course is that you use your OU email address. Right? So that way it pops up, it doesn't wind up in my spam filter and that sort of thing. Just make sure if you don't have your o OU email address right, at oakland.edu, um, get that, each of you should have one, um, get that up and running and email me via that because I email you via that. Right, so, um, yeah, so that's email. Um, I've already said uh, something about the, uh, the discussion forum, keep it classy, keep it uh, uh, topical, and um, I don't do extra credit. Uh, it, there's no time for extra credit in a break next semester like this one. I get a lot of students, um, and it, an extra credit assignment is, well, it's, it's extra and additional. There are lots of assignments, and I've made them easy and accessible, and you should be able to engage with them. Um, so even before you ask, I don't, I, I just, it, there's no, there's no time for it, right? So, um, but nonetheless, I give you a lot of control over your grade. So, um, what's next? Those are the policies. You see, I feel like a jerk every time I do policies because it's, it's, I come off hard, but then it, now that we've talked about the policies, I get to be a nice guy with regard to the way that I apply them. Um, grading and feedback is the next thing. Um, your assignments are writing intensive. Some of you are going to write quite a bit for uh, these assignments. They take time to grade and you'll see the comments that I issue on these assignments are substantial. In some cases I write more than you've written for me in the way of a comment. Um, it, this is intended to help you improve. This is intended to give you feedback so that you succeed on the next test, that sort of thing. So um, these assignments uh, take a long time to grade. Right? There's no, no way around that. If I'm doing my job properly, I have to give you a lot of feedback and they take a long time. So uh, I try um, to uh, keep myself uh, within two weeks. You submit and then I get it back to you within two weeks. I try, all right? Um, I do sometimes fall behind. Um, in terms of uh, your responses to the questions, uh, the criteria um, that I apply in all cases are clarity of the response, completeness, uh, did you answer the question completely? I asked you to do three things. Did you do two things? Um, the understanding exhibited in your use of the course material and the strength of the argument or insight into the course material at question. Right. So essentially, I'm I'm evaluating uh, your arguments right in terms of those criteria, which are the oddly the same sort of criteria that you're applying to the works that we're evaluating as part of this course. So um, nonetheless, two weeks, so it takes me a while to grade those assignments. But just so that um, it, you have a number of your grades back super quick, uh, the Moodle quizzes, like that, Moodle grades them. Right? Uh, they're multiple choice um, and uh, pertaining to that 30% of your final grade, you'll have them immediately. All right? And the discussion forums, like I say, uh, you'll have a midterm review. Um, and I set it up during reading week so that I do it then. Um, you'll see an assignment pop up, but there's nothing to submit there. It's just a matter of my plotting in a grade and having some place in grade book to put that grade. Um, the midterm review is, a, 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 what do I call it here, do, 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 a provisional grade kind of thing, uh, by week 10 of the course, kind of thing. Um, so uh, that grade is, it is weighted at zero. Right? It's meant to give you feedback. Right? At your final grade will be um, the end of the semester. Right? Um, so instructional technology and having a backup plan. Well, um, it, 
you're going to need the use of internet for this course, you're going to need a reliable computer, um, you're going to have to be able to access Moodle, you're going to have to do some word processing, etc, etc, etc. Now, these assignments take a while uh, to compose, so you're probably not just sitting down typing up your assignment and submitting. You're probably chipping away at your assignments. Um, have a backup plan, right? If your computer crashes on you, and uh, I'm, I'm on my fourth computer in two years, right? This is my brand new Dell I'm on right here. Um, and my old ones have, have kind of crapped out on me. I, I have backup computers. I've got two spare laptops, right? And a whole series of documents saved to those laptops just in case my computer crashes. I also have a number of memory sticks. I probably have a couple, oh, they're in my book bag. But nonetheless, right, that's where I put important documents backed up. Um, cloud storage is also um, an option, right? That sort of thing. So um, it, the idea is that if um, your technology decides to go kaput, then um, you have a backup plan. Right. So, instructional technology. Uh, Moodle is the hub, as you know. Um, so, logon ID and password are the same as your email account. Um, it, you will not receive an email like the welcome in the syllabus um, attached notifying you of class news assignments or new resources posted. It's your responsibility to log in regularly. Um, it, generally every two weeks you can expect new material uh, to be, uh, well, to appear on Moodle. Um, you've got to be checking that. Uh, what sort of things should you um, expect? Well, it, my videos uh, via YouTube will be posted to Moodle. Links to video additional supplementary resources will be posted to Moodle. Course assignments, uh, content forms, all on Moodle. And, and again, it's your responsibility to access Moodle regularly and stay up to date. Um, uh, this will also involve your having a backup plan, um, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, I've got all of the information for uh, technical support on Moodle there. Um, their offices are actually pretty good uh, with regard to that sort of thing. Um, so um, if, if you have Moodle tech support issues, contact them um, because I'm, I'm not an expert. Right? It's not my gig. I'm, I'm an expert on this stuff, not that stuff. Right? Um, now, this is how the course is going to go. Um, page four of your syllabus, um, I've laid out a tentative schedule with all of your due dates um, on it um, in one easy printable kind of thing. So if I were you, I'd print this and slap it up on your wall so that you know when everything's due. All right? um, all the video material for this course is required. I ask you questions about it. I assume that you've engaged with it, so view all of that material. In fact, you won't be able to do the quizzes unless you've viewed that material. So um, that's 30% of your grade. If you don't want 30%, you don't want to um, pass the course. It's the idea. So um, uh, uh, the Socrates material, so basically how this is going to go, I've recorded a, a video uh, that goes over, um, for example, the Socrates material, and then I've posted two supplementary videos, one by Rick Roderick and another one by a guy by the name of Philando Baton, a British <laughs> geeky philosopher, I like him. Um, anyhow, all right, so that will pop up. Um, the first quiz is due January 19th. You've got to view that material in order to access the quiz, and the quiz asks you questions about that material. Right. Um, you will have a form on Socrates that will appear when the Socrates material appears, and then we move on to Aristotle. It's the same thing. I think it's my video plus one supplementary video, a quiz, a form, and then it's time for a test, right? First test, I'm posting Monday, January 29th, and it's due February 5th by noon.
right? And then we move on to the second section. You see, I've got this broken down into the first section, second section, and third section, and it basically goes the same way. So can't, can't videos, can't readings, can't forum, can't quiz, on to mill, mill readings, mill videos, uh, mill forum, mill quiz, and then a test third section, and on we go. All right. Um, so I put some effort into making sure this is um, clear, accessible, and printable for you. Um, so uh, that's got all of your dates. Um, it's, I've got these paired in um, week by week kind of thing. Week 9 and 10 is mill. Week 11 and 12 is Nietzsche. Week 13, 14, and 15 is Jean-Paul Sartre. All right. Um, uh, I, I note that we have winter, winter reset, uh, recess, so everybody grab your two can go out on the playground. And the term amuses me. So uh, winter uh, recess begins February 17th at 10 p.m. Classes resume February 26th at 7.30 a.m. This means that we don't have a week eight, effectively. Right? So, um, That'll be the deal. Um, generally, your tests are due by noon. Um, uh, your quizzes I give you till the last possible minute on the due date um, to engage with those, but get them done early. They are super quick, right? But um, it provided you've done the work for them. Um, and uh, the only caveat, all of the forms close um, uh, at uh, 11.55, five minutes to midnight on April 20th. And um, uh, the final section test is posted April 9th, and you've got till the 20th, so I give you a lot of time with that. So, um, finally, um, with regard to what a letter and a percentage thing um, uh, sort of correspond to, there's no OU generalized policy on that. I've looked into this. Uh, they let me determine that. So um, I do what I'm comfortable with, which is probably different than what you're used to. If you turn to page five of your syllabus, what you will find is that A pluses are 100% down to 93, A's are 92.9 .9 down to 86, A minuses are 85.9 .9 down to 80. B's are generally 70s, C's are generally 60s, D's are generally 50s, and anything below a D fails. All right. Um, so let that sink in a little bit. And um, it, now understand also that it's going to get it be be proportionally harder to get into that top 20 percent of your grade. And let me show you how it doesn't mean a thing. All the re office of the registrar sees from me is a GPA that I submit for the, a grade point that I submit for the course, right? And um, the official um, letter grade to grade point conversion chart that the office of the registrar gives me I, is right below my grade scheme. So basically, if you've got an A range grade that's anywhere from 80 to 100, right? And then you get a, a, a four point grade of anywhere from 3.6 up to 4.0, depending on the quality of your A. If it's an A minus, it's a 3.6 or 3.7. If it's an A, it's a 3.8 or nine. Uh, so basically, if you've got an A, you've got an A, even if that A minus is 80% right on the button, right? You still get the 3.6. That's the way that works. Um, so uh, I, I do this because the first semester I taught, I just did this and didn't tell anyone that I was doing this. And I had students literally in tears finding my car in the parking lot. Why am I doing so horribly in this class? No, no, you've got to be. I, 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 I've got to, I've got to be. Right? So anyhow, um, it, that's just so that you don't freak out. Um, if you have any questions about this syllabus, please email me, contact me, come see me, um, that sort of thing. Come see me anyway. It's, it's, I never meet my online students, so it's nice to when I get a chance to. Um, I'm looking forward to an interesting series of conversations about an interesting series of, of theorists that we'll be engaging with all semester. Um, like I say, on the 7th, uh, or 7th, 4th, um, 
not fourth. No, I was right in the first place, seventh. All right, got the wrong month on my paper calendar. Um, the seventh, you can expect the Socrates material pertaining to the Apology and the Credo to pop up. On the 21st, it's Aristotle and so on and so forth. Right. Um, in the meantime, there are two videos posted to Moodle. Um, one little cartoony thing from um, uh, the School of Life, their philosophy series. It's called What's Philosophy For? Which is kind of cutesy, but nonetheless, you'll get used to these videos. I use them throughout the semester. The other one is sort of a general introduction and an introduction to pre-Socratic philosophy um, that uh, basically sets up um, your Socrates video and your Socrates reading. I'm trying to set up the situation that you find Socrates writing in. Um, so screen that stuff. And um, I look forward to an excellent semester with you guys. Um, have good days, one for each of you. Grant, out.